Today on our 2015 Kia Soul, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Kurt Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C11419. So here's what our hitch looks like fully installed. It's going to sit right below the bumper and all you're really going to see is the, the receiver tube on the hitch. Now this is a Class 1 hitch, so it's going to be an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter receiver tube. And as you can see, it has a nice reinforced collar, giving it a clean finished look. This hitch is going to use a standard half inch pin and clip, which is included, which is nice because you're not going to have to buy anything extra. And the safety chain loops here, it's like a rolled steel stock. And as you can see, there's plenty of room to get most size hooks on or off. This hitch features a 200 pound gross tongue weight, and that's going to be the force that's pushing down. It also features a 2000 pound gross trailer weight rating, which is the amount that it can pull. Now, I do want to mention, you want to check your vehicle's owner's manual to make sure that your vehicle can handle that weight. The manufacturer does recommend whenever towing a non-trailer load, such as a bike rack or a cargo carrier, that you use a stabilization strap. Now, you can pick one of those up on our website using part number 18050. Now, I'll give you a few measurements to help you when choosing for accessories for your new hitch, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper is five and a half inches. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening is 10 and three quarter inches. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let me go ahead and show you how I got it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to loosen our wheel well liners from our wheel wells, and we're going to have a push fastener here, as well as several screws on the inside of our wheel well liner. So we just take a Phillips head screwdriver or bit driver, loosen that screw up. So if we just loosen the center section here, we'll be able to pop out the rest of the clip. And then we move to the inside where our other fasteners are. We're gonna have several fasteners going along the edge here. And we're just gonna remove all the fasteners on the back side of our wheel well liner so we have some room to move it out of the way. I'm just going to be using a Phillips head bit here. And you can use a screwdriver or any Phillips head that you can get in here. Finally, right on the inside of our wheel wall liner, we're going to have another one of these push pin fasteners. And we're just going to pop out the center section. So I'll loosen our fastener and we can move our wheel wall liner out of the way, giving us room. Now we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Our next step is gonna be lowering our exhaust. Now, I do wanna mention it is always a good idea to make sure that it doesn't fall all the way down, but we don't have to worry too much because we have our exhaust here. I'm gonna come back to the hanger and I'm just gonna spray a little bit of penetrating oil around the rubber isolator to help get it off. Next, to make our installation a little easier, we're going to have to lower our EVAP canister. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove one nut here. There's one on the back side here. And then we have a plastic nut right here. Now, if we bring our attention to where we removed our bolts, we're going to have a spring clip that's gonna hold our canister in place. And we're just gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and we're gonna bend those tabs out of the way just enough so that we can bring our canister down. Just like that. Now, with it out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and get my strap just to make sure that nothing bumps into it, makes it fall down. I'm simply just gonna wrap my strap around it, come back over the rear axle here I'm just gonna tighten it up just for some extra support. Now with our EVAP canister out of the way, we can start prepping our frame rail to put our hitch in place. I'm gonna clean out our weld nuts. We're gonna have one on the rear portion of our frame, as well as one on the side here, right in front of it, and then one just right behind that. Now, I'm just gonna take a little bit of penetrating oil. I'm gonna spray it in the hole. I'm going to come back with a nylon brush and clean it out. 
And we're going to repeat the same process for the other two remaining holes on this side of the frame rail, as well as the other three on the other side. Now, if you don't have a nylon brush like this, you can pick one up on our website using part number 814092. Now, when we put our hitch in place, we want to make sure that the teeth on the washer are facing towards the hitch. Now, with an extra set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch into place, and we're going to get one bolt loosely in place just to support the hitch. Now that we have one bolt on each side supporting the hitch, we can go ahead and put our hardware in the remaining holes. Now with all of our hardware in place, we can go ahead and start torquing them down. Now I'm going to be using a 17 millimeter socket, and we're going to torque down our hardware to the specified amount in the instructions. And we're going to repeat that same process for all the remaining hardware. For on our passenger side here, our vertical bolt going upwards into our frame, I'm going to be using a crow's foot just because of the limited access because of the crossbar. Now we just need to torque our remainder bolts and making sure that we get the ones on the outside. And I found it easiest to get a three inch extension to give you enough clearance between the hitch and still be able to make contact with the bolt head. Now with our Hitch torqued down, we can go ahead and put our EVAP canister back and start replacing everything that we took off. So again, we're just gonna be extra careful watching the lines, making sure we're not gonna damage any. And we're gonna reinstall the two 10 millimeter nuts that we took off in the beginning. Now with our EVAP canister back up, we can go ahead and put our exhaust back in place. Our wheel wall liner here is going to interfere and hit the hitch. This section that I marked out right here is going to need to be cut, and then we can reattach our wheel well liner. Now I'm just going to be using a pair of aviation snips. Now you can use anything, scissors, a box cutter, anything to cut through. This isn't that thick of material. Now the section we cut out is going to be right here. So now our wheel wall liner is going to fit nicely right around our hitch. Now that that's in place, we can go ahead and replace all of our hardware that we took off from our wheel wells. And then I'll finish up our look at the Kirk Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C11419 on our 2015 Kia Soul. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.